Okay, so for the first part of taking this headstock apart, you have to actually take this chuck out. Now you can hold this chuck here, spin it out. This goes against what everybody says. But if you lightly tap this, I've, I've tapped it already, I could get mine to spin out. So, see, but they tell you not to do that because you got them guys that'll probably just hammer on this with a sledge and bend all your tooling and so that's probably why they don't recommend it <clears throat> the right way would be to hold this with something hold that with something spin her off but ours freed up pretty easy so I'm gonna take just like this they don't want to hold your hand underneath you don't want this to fall on the ground it's heavy so be careful this is how you're going to change your chucks so you got your chuck apart and take these three screws out. Next, you want to try to get this face plate off. You're probably going to need a little brass mallet. You don't want to pry too hard or you don't want to hit too hard because this was most likely cast, which would which would snap and then you've got to repair that. So we're going to get some kind of mallet here. All right, so this is perfect. We found this piece of brass, just with that brass rod. Try to assist us in getting that apart. No, we got that popped off. The face comes apart like this. We're gonna wanna put everything back the way we got it off. So we're gonna lay it all together. Just like that, and this is a cupped washer. So your bevel is gonna go towards the outside. Okay, now that we have that face off, I'm gonna go over here and you're gonna wanna take this off here. This is like a nut that holds all this gearing together. And this, I can't remember, I think it's like a two speed, but it'll lock it in. And I did just find we have a broken gear here. So we're gonna have to find a replacement port. Maybe that's why there's extra gears, I don't know. <clears throat> and then what you wanna do is you wanna get like a little drill bit or an Allen key and you wanna stick in there and I'll, I'll show you how that spins right, off. Now that we got that little nut loose, Take that off. Again, we're gonna set that aside as it goes. These little screws in here. Okay, set back in. Now I know that's not called a two speed, but that's, I'm pretty sure what that does, it speeds it up. This gear, you might have to uh, use a brass punch for some persuading, but you don't want to well on it because that's probably how this got chipped. Um, and this just pulls off. Now you got to watch because there's actually a little keyway right there. So we're going to pull this gear off the way we put it on. So I'm going to just set it down like that. Okay, and this nut went like this. So we're just going to pull, put it in order as it goes. And it's like should be a little half moon keyway should have my GoPro out here because it's hard to do one-handed. That is our keyway we got out. And I actually put that guy, I don't think you could see with this terrible lighting, I put that guy in here. Okay, now these shims, bushings, whatever you want to call them, they'll slide right out. Our leg's down, so we can't make those right now. We're getting closer to the next steps here. You want to keep an eye on these bearings. It's a greasable, packable bearing. If we're pounding on this, there's a chance that you could lose it all. Uh, you could put this back on there, but you risk of damaging that if you're not sliding this face on, I believe. <laughs> so we're going to try to test the waters leaving it off. There's a lot of old grease packed in there. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. You want to get your Allen key and on this bull gear, 
That's what I call it. It might be a drive gear. I don't know. But anyway, on this bull gear, there's an Allen key. It's going to fit in there. There's another key weight down in here that you can't see because of my terrible lighting. Let's see if I can capture it. No, I can't. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I can't get it. But anyway, this key weight is going to kind of line up where, in that shaft where that key weight is that we took out, uh, which is down in here. So let's loosen it again. This is a little bit of a project. It's nothing you can't handle. Um, I don't know if we want to take it all the way out, but I'm going to because I don't want to risk damaging that shaft. That would probably be really expensive if you can even find it. So there it is. It's just a little set screw. So now we got that out. Hey, okay, so here comes the scary part. We're going to need to try to tap this out of the headstock. You do not want to flip this camera it. around here. You do not want to damage that in any way. So use a piece of wood here. You don't want to damage these threads. I, I, I see this is on the end here, but still be very careful. This is thin tubing. We're going to try to pound this out now. And if everything lines up, you're going to have gears dropping. So be careful. As you can see, that bearing's starting to creep out. We're just gonna keep lightly checking this and making sure we're good here and using our block of wood. And like I said, keep working its way out. And that's just it. You're gonna wanna drive that out to we're loose here. Like I said, you're gonna wanna pay attention to these keyways, how this locks in this spool gear on this shaft. And then also you don't wanna drop all this. So we're gonna take this out now. And I know it's getting late, it's hard to see. So right here's that keyway in there. And then also this is a good time you can inspect anything. You know, your your gears, your drive gears, everything. So now we're gonna slip in our drive belt and then this side on the headstock will be complete and then we're gonna disassemble that side and slip the other side of the belt onto that side. All right, so not that you guys really know this, but it is sunny and it is day two. So what I decided after finding, I don't know if I showed you, I found a broken gear in here. So that broken gear, I'm having a hard time finding on eBay used. I keep finding this change gear, I guess they call it. Uh, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is look around. If I can't find the gear replacement, I'm gonna just make it or have someone, a buddy of mine make it, help them make it. Uh, so right now we just set this back in, we lifted this out, we put the belt on. <clears throat> now we're gonna go ahead and just reassemble the same way we took it apart. It's a little bit hard to see, but what you're gonna wanna do is this bull gear has that keyway slot and you're gonna wanna line them up. And what I did is I made sure that bull gear, its slot was facing upward, that way it's not down. And then I end up losing my, sorry about that, losing my keyway. Next up, we're going to put this back together, put this collar in, get our gear back on. Again, you're going to line up your keyways. Remember, we took out that half moon shaped keyway, so we're going to put it back in the way we found it. Careful not to lose any of this. Okay, so we got this change gear on here <clears throat> and this nut. What I keep finding out is as we try to push this collar into the headstock housing that this all keeps coming out of the headstock housing on the front where the lathe chuck sits so i think what i'm going to do is start assembling the way we disassembled the front i'm going to pound this bearing all the way back put this on push this collar into the headstock tighten this nut and then we'll line up our bull gear and remember that little set screw we took out push that all back so it's in the place where it was Check for that, put a little flashlight in there, screw it in and we'll stop, start on the back.
I guess you can call this the shield, but it is also the belt ten tensioner. Uh, if you look back here, that little mechanism, not on the left where the belt rods, but on the right, pushes that rod down and, and that mechanism down there, it basically spreads those apart, tightens that belt up so it can spin. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take that off just so it's a little easier to get to all this. Now that we have the belt tensioner brackets off of the tensioner, all I did was flip them around and put the bolts back in them loosely. That way you don't lose any bolts. Now we're gonna lift this whole assembly off of the uh, lathe. I'm gonna take this nut for the bracket and I'm gonna thread that back on here. That way we don't lose it. supposed to actually have those little oiler caps and they okay, now we got that little allen key out which is a 1 8 size it's rather small compared to the last one I'm gonna try to see if I can't get another one out of here I think I see when I'm gonna blow this out with there after I do that just in case to line this up correctly I'm gonna mark this in here with some chalk that way whenever I'm sliding the shaft in and out I know where it was And again, with everything on this machine, you don't want to force anything. So, you know, I'm going to start by tapping this stuff easy, probably using my brass punch. And I'm going to see if I can move this shaft. Okay, so I found another two Allen keys in these collars. I'm going to take those off. And then, I'll, then I'm hoping I could slide this out. Because I really don't want to take this all apart if I don't have to. It's not a lot of work, but if it's unnecessary, I just got to slide this enough to get this belt through here. Those two are... I believe are shorter than the two that were in the drive pulleys. So you're gonna wanna not mix those two up. Two up. Those two right there are the ones I took out of these two collars. So that does push that out. So I don't know if you could see in there. It's hard to see, but we did mark at an upper left-hand corner with some chalk. So I'm gonna push this out and try to get this belt. This will most likely take some finagling, but all I did was drive that out to there Watch, you don't lose this collar. I'm going to slip this belt in, and I'm going to put it back in place. A little update here. Just a small update. There is an indentation on that shaft to line those collars up. So I guess I didn't have to mark it, but better safe than sorry. Now I have everything back into place. Mine also, they never had the pedestal on, so I shim that up to the right position. I think I'll still leave this in for extra support. It's still solid. Uh, I did find out that this has a two-speed all even on this. These Logan Lays, they sure do have a lot of adjustments and different speeds you can adjust them on. So I can't wait to get to learn this lathe a little better. Like I said, there's a two-speed here. You got three speeds here. You got that other gear that's like a two-speed. I mean, it's a very versatile lathe. So we're gonna put this hood back on now. All right, so we didn't fix our two-speed yet. Uh, our other gear that's broke, I put it back together. We're not gonna use that option right now. I need to turn some metal down for a couple projects. Uh, it is a little, the tension is a little tight, which is good, because that belt's gonna, that belt's gonna stretch. And just kind of let it work itself down. Because if you force it, I'm assuming you could tear the belt, pre-stretch it early, but, Remember, always, always don't put wear loose clothing around these. You can get sucked in. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, seek professional help. I'm no expert. I'm learning at my own risk. Uh, so I don't, 
wouldn't advise anybody do this the way I'm doing it, but you can watch for reference purposes. Thanks for watching the channel.